Hi, this is Rob Warlock from Business Loan Services and welcome to my Friday Business Finance Bulletin, my weekly roundup of news tips, ideas and strategies on raising finance and dealing with banks. So as you can see, I'm on location again today. I couldn't resist after doing some planning with a new member of the team who's recently joined us, who we'll have a chance to have a chat with later. I couldn't resist the opportunity just to come out and do today's bulletin in the sun. So what's the news? Well, an interesting survey from Bibby Financial Services. They went out and asked 1,000 business owners the question, how do you fund yourself? Now, half of those business owners came back and said that their preferred source of finance was now their own savings or family and friends. Now, that compares just under a quarter ago when 26% of business owners said they would use those sources of funding. So it's a massive jump from 26% to nearly 50%. And it just shows the reluctance that many business owners have to go and approach banks. Now, I'm a great advocate, of course, that you should be committing your own money to business. It's a cheaper source of finance at the end of the day. But you know, it's all about balancing risk. I've said before, banks are beginning to lend, and of course, there are plenty of alternative sources of finance out there. So don't necessarily feel that you have to go risking all of your savings or tapping into the support of your friends and family when there are some other opportunities out there. It's an interesting survey that. Talk about access to finance generally, um, there's a new report came out sponsored by the government um, uh, in conjunction with the Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales. Um, it's called the Business Finance Guide and it's about a 20 page guide and looks at all the different types of finance that are available for businesses um, in different stages of life from startup um, to early stage funding, equity, crowdfunding, traditional bank loans, asset finance, the whole lot. So it's a very good overview with some very useful links um, in there. As again, it's just part of everybody's drive to make sure the business owners know exactly what is available out there. So if you want to go and access that guide, you can download it for free um, at the link below here. Um, Another thing that the government um, recently did, well, launched about a year ago now, if not more, was the British Business Bank. Uh, Vince Cable, uh, the Secretary of State for Business, um, announced this week that the British Business Bank has uh, got out there a total of £800 million so far. Now, the British Business Bank was really just um, an umbrella organisation to bring together uh, a lot of uh, government initiatives that had already been put together for funding. So they reckon, say, about £800 million has already been lent out there. So we've all been very low-key, um, and hopefully we'll see a lot more visibility about what this British Business Bank is going to be doing for business owners. So what about the alternative lending scene? Well, two bits of news there. Interestingly, YouTube. Yes, YouTube have entered the kind of crowdfunding schemes. Now, what they're planning to do is to say they are now going to allow, on a trial basis, business owners to put a pitch up and invite people who are viewing the video to pledge some money. Now, that, that's interesting. So what we're going to find is only at the moment in the US, Mexico, Japan and Australia, we could see business owners putting their own little pitch up and then having a donate here to help me grow my business button. So it'll be interesting to see how that pilot goes and to see whether it here comes here, particularly to the UK. Um, another uh, crowdfunding site popped up on my radar. I think they've been going for a while, but again, interesting concept called the Syndicate Room. Now this one is helping business owners to raise equity, but what they're doing, they're partnering private investors like you or I together with experienced angel investors. Now angel investors are say experienced investors, they don't get their hands dirty of the day to day side of the business, but they've got some experience and some understanding how the world works and just want to put some money out there. So how this is going to work is, first of all, Syndicate Room would approach um, their list of angel investors and they say, guys, we've got a deal here, a business wants to raise half a million pounds. So we'll go around the angel network first, and then once the angel network have said, okay, we're up to where we want to be, and they say that's a hundred thousand pound difference, then the Syndicate Room will list it on the website and say to private investors, guys, the angel investors have invested up to 400,000, but there's another 100,000 opportunity here for you. So it's a good way for private investors to have a feeling of confidence on the basis that experienced angel investors have already put money in. So if you want to know more about that, either from um, selling potentially some of your equity or to become an investor, just check out the website. So what brings me here today? Well, I mentioned that I've been doing a planning session with a new member of the team who joined recently, Steve Taylor. So just a short while ago, I just had an opportunity to grab a couple of minutes with Steve um, to ask him about his background, what he does here, and um, to share some tips with us on raising finance. So let's go to that interview now. 
Well, as I mentioned, we recently had a new member of the team join, and um, that's Steve Taylor. So welcome, Steve. Thank you very much. So Steve just recently joined uh, Business Loan Services and we've been having a bit of a planning afternoon. So I thought it'd be an ideal opportunity for Steve to introduce himself to you. So Steve, say once again, welcome. Thank you. So give us an idea, what have you been doing in your banking career prior to joining Business Loan Services? Right, um, well prior to this Rob, I was with a high street bank for the last 27 years. Mm -hmm. um, the last role that I held was in a risk underwriting um, based in South Wales, um, where I was actually looking at the lending applications um, to support businesses seeking finance anything up to three million pounds. Um, now we did actually cover the whole of the UK in terms of um, the respective businesses but mm. primarily concentrated on South Wales and the southwest areas. Um, prior to that um, I was in the particular bank's debt recovery unit um, trying to support business customers who had um, hit trading difficulties, mm. trying to work with them in finding a way forward but also then looking to you know try and recover some money for for the bank as well okay so you've seen both the good side and the bad side then I certainly have yes yes okay, yes. okay. so within business loan services then so tell everybody what, what's exactly your role what are you looking to do right um, what it primarily the ethos is for business loan services is to develop long-term customer relationships with business owners um, who are looking to seek business finance mm -hmm. um, and what we will do is we will go in and support the customers, um, look at the various um, options that they have, um, which could be a high street bank, but equally there are a lot of alternatives out there in the marketplace. Um, and we go in, understand about the actual business itself, the people and also their financing requirements. And then we then look at uh, the best option for them and then try and put together a proposal that will meet a finance provider's request. Um, but however, there are also times when the business owner might ha not have a good uh, relationship with their bank. So we will go in and support them, work through that re relationship difficulty and, and try and get it back on to an even keel. Um, but more importantly, um, a lot of business owners are now looking for us to work with them on a consultancy basis um, where we will go in and support the business in you know, long term financial planning, um, supporting them on strategic goals, um, helping them sort of think about where they want to take their business forward um, and making sure that we challenge them to achieve those goals. Good, okay. So obviously you say you've got wide experience in banking, um, that's why you obviously joined BLS because uh, you bring a lot of experience to the team. So in the time that you've been in this whole space, what would you say the three key things that business owners need to be doing um, in order to get themselves finance ready? Okay. The first one I would say is they've got to have a good sound business plan. Um, that will form the base of any proposal that would need to be put to a finance provider. Um, but equally, it's a very good document for the business owner there to ensure that they've got an understanding of their business, um, an understanding of the sector that they're trading in, um, but also that it's actually got goals that they can then challenge their business going forward. Um, that would then be coupled with, secondly, good financial information. Uh, not only where they've traded and the historic information, um, but keeping a good set of present management information so that they know exactly what's happening with the business at any particular time, um, and then they can act on uh, changes accordingly, but have an understanding as well about where their business is going uh, three, six months down the line, even a couple of years down the line, uh, and these would be in the form of projections. Um, the third and probably key point that all finance providers are looking at now is affordability. Um, and really a business owner has to know, now show that their business is sustainable, it's long term, and that if they go for financing that they can afford it in amongst all the other payments that they've got to make through the business, the creditors, VAT, the tax, etc. As well as possible personal drawings they might need to take for covering their mortgage. Um, and within that affordability, they need to make sure that the business isn't taking on too much debt so that they then for have a contingency um, in terms of the affordability and a fallback position should you know the trading position happen to get worse yeah. over the or, years. Or you know, they talk about interest rate rises in 2015 onwards, so I've got to factor that into account as well. Absolutely, um, and and you know we're, we're in a period of very low interest rates at the moment, they will be going back up 
at some stage. Mm. So therefore, if you're seeking finance now, you need to factor in the possibility that interest rates will rise in the short term. Good. So send me a business plan, bring accounts up to date and make sure you can afford it. Absolutely, Rob. Definitely. Good stuff. Okay. So Steve, if, uh, if anybody out there wants to get hold of you, what's your email address? Uh, email address is steve at businessloanservices.co.uk or just go to the website www.businessloanservices.co.uk. Excellent. Thanks very much, Steve. And once again, welcome on board. Thank you very um, much. So we'll hopefully see more of you in the future. Yeah. Okay. Thanks very much. So there we are, a bit of background on Steve. Now Steve joins uh, myself and my existing colleague, uh, Colin Venables, who I'm conscious I've not had a chat with. So I know Colin will be watching this. So Colin, it'll be your turn next. So that's it for this week. Hope you enjoyed the video. And by the way, thanks for the feedback for many of you on the special video I did in the previous episode um, from the National Association of Commercial Finance Brokers Expo. Um, that was really well received, so thanks for that. So I look forward to being with you again next Friday and have a successful and profitable week and catch you next week. Bye-bye now.